What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be going over the Cold War MP5 as I think this is one of the best weapons in the game and a lot of people are just writing it off or ignoring it. If you guys do find this video helpful or informative, please do remember to give this video a like, subscribe if you would like to see more, comment down below what you think of this build and what weapon you would like to see me make a video on next. So the Cold War MP5, I think it's a top 3 SMG for sure. I think the top 3 subs in the game right now are the MAC-10 the MP5 from Modern Warfare, and the Cold War MP5. Maybe in that order, but it could be pretty interchangeable. I have to get more experience with this SMG. But the MAC-10 got nerfed. I feel like a lot of people ignore that, but the MAC-10 came out, it was super busted. It got nerfed, but the Gallantry blueprint, for some reason, didn't receive those nerfs up until the most recent week when the DMRs were also nerfed. So the MAC-10 isn't as effective as it once was. It's still an incredibly good gun, and it probably still is the best SMG, but the difference between the MAC-10 and the Cold War MP5 or the Modern Warfare MP5 isn't as big as it once was. And you can definitely get a lot done with these other submachine guns. Like I already said, I believe those are the top three SMGs. The Modern Warfare or the Cold War MP5 is just a little misunderstood, I feel like, because a lot of people are taking advantage of the wrong attachments on it. Specifically, the Task Force Barrel. We're going to talk about that when I get to the build here in a bit. But the Task Force Barrel is probably not what you want to use, but a lot of people are just using it. The Cold War attachments are very confusing, and a lot of the descriptions for them are mislabeled, if you guys were unaware. A lot of times the Cold War attachments say they do one thing and do like a completely other thing. Lots of creators have been able to test this and find this out, like JGod and True Game Data. It's just how it is. So these attachments, don't trust what they say they do. Trust what YouTube creators say they do. As dumb as that sounds, uh, they're just bugged for right now. Hopefully that gets fixed in the next update and we actually can get accurate descriptions of what these weapons do. So... What does this MP5 have going for it? It has an incredibly good time to kill, actually. It kills faster than both the MAC-10 and the Modern Warfare MP5. Its main drawback is it has more recoil than both of those weapons, and the way a lot of people are loading out this weapon is going to end up ha making it have more recoil than it should. But even with this ideal loadout that I have, it still does have more recoil than those other two submachine guns, from my experience. So we're going to get into the build now. So for our class setup for this weapon, we're going to have a pretty standard build, but a lot of people might not know what are actually the best attachments to use on this weapon. I actually changed my build quite a bit, and once I settled on this, I had a lot more success with the weapon, and I liked the weapon a lot more. To start off with, we're going to go Agency Suppressor. That's pretty much self-explanatory. It's basically the Cold War weapons version of the Monolithic Suppressor. The barrel is where a lot of people mess up. A lot of people just go for the Task Force barrel. What this barrel does is... Damage range, bullet velocity, reduced horizontal recoil, but increased vertical recoil, which sounds like a good trade-off as vertical recoil is easier to control than horizontal recoil, but this gun doesn't have horizontal recoil, so there's no point in trading vertical for horizontal when it doesn't really have horizontal anyways, so we're going to go for the reinforced heavy barrel. This just does damage range and bullet velocity. I know this task force barrel doesn't say everything I just said, but that's because a lot of the Cold War descriptions for the attachments are bugged. So we're going to go with that. For the underbarrel, we're going to go with the bruiser grip. Once again, the attachment description is bugged. It says this does melee quickness, but the bruiser grip is actually the grip which reduces vertical recoil the most. And as we already said, vertical recoil is what the MP5 has most. So we're going to go with the bruiser foregrip. For our, our magazine, we're going to go with the salvo 50 round mag. And we have one remaining attachment. You could go Serpent Wrap, and that's what I did for a while. You think of this like stippled grip tape, but it's not. The benefit you get from Serpent Wrap is very minor, almost negligible. So instead of wasting an attachment point on that, we're going to go with the Collapsed Stock. This is going to increase your or reduce your sprint to fire time, which is going to make your gun much more reactive. If we go to the Modern Warfare MP5, for example, let's just uh, let's put that somewhere. You had... Oh shoot, I did the wrong MP5. With the Modern Warfare MP5, we had 5 milliwatt laser reducing our sprint to fire time, and then also stippled grip tape reducing our sprint to fire time. So you had a very speedy, very reactive class setup with the Modern Warfare MP5, and that's kind of what we're going for with this one. Uh, another attachment you could use is the Raider stock. This has the same sprint to fire benefits of the clap stock, but it has better strafe speed. This is going to mainly come down to comfortability. I strafe aim a lot, and I haven't been able to get used to these faster strafe stocks. But if you're someone who can get used to them, the SAS combat stock or the Raider stock are very good attachments. And you could use either one of them over the collapsed stock. 
If you don't like that faster strafe speed, you don't feel like putting in the time to get used to it, this is a good attachment. You get faster sprint out time and there's no downsides to it. So that's going to be our final attachment for this. And that's a reason why a lot of the Cold War weapons feel a little bit weird compared to like the Modern Warfare MP5 per se, is because we had two attachments reducing our sprint out time on the Modern Warfare MP5. And as you see with that build, we're not going to be taking advantage of the Task Force Barrel. Once, like I already said in the video, the attachments do not do what they say they do. A lot of people see the Task Force Barrel and they're like, ooh, improved damage. This is definitely the way to go, right? And in some guns, it is going to be the way to go. Like the FFAR, I think the Task Force Barrel is definitely the way you want to go. But for this MP5, because the recoil it has is pretty much only vertical, you're pretty much griefing yourself. By putting on the task force barrel because you don't have to worry about horizontal recoil anyways so don't put on the task force barrel put on that bruiser foregrip that's going to give you the least vertical recoil possible with this weapon and once i put on the collapsible stock or if you want to use the raider stock once you get a faster sprint out time these cold war smgs feel so much better than what they initially do. I feel like that's one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't enjoy using the Cold War SMGs at first. People used the MAC-10 because it was just brutal and like insane damage output, but not a lot of people wanted to use this MP5 because it just felt like clunky and weird compared to the Modern Warfare one. But when you put on one of these Sprint to Fire stocks, you get a much better handling weapon. And I think these Sprint to Fire stocks are really good. I also use one on the FFAR. Been using that a lot recently as well. And this definitely helps bridge the gap, I feel like, between some of the Cold War weapons and the Modern Warfare weapons, especially because the Serpent Wrap isn't doing much. So that's going to be it for this video. I would just extremely recommend you guys trying out the MP5, the, modern, the Cold War version of it, because it's actually a really brutal weapon. I'm going to let the gameplay play out. You guys can see more gameplay of it and see how effective this weapon is and how just much I was melting people with it in this gameplay. Like I said before, if you guys did enjoy this, find it helpful. Remember to give it a like, subscribe if you would like to see more, and comment down below which weapon you want to see me make a video on next if there's any weapons that you're struggling with in Warzone. I don't know why that guy didn't take that fight. His best case scenario there is he kills me and then takes my car. Because now he's kind of fucked. If I want to hold him, I can. I don't really want to, though. But, like, he should have just, like, full committed there. Because, like, I'm fucked. Not allowed to miss. Pretty cool. Oh, this is AIDS. I don't get my kill on that guy. I need plates. This is so dangerous. No one ever misses shots ever. So like the fact that I'm driving around with no plates like this and my car is one shot, it's so busted. But I, I need to get out of here. I could have looted that guy for his plates, but I don't know if he ended up killing the other person that was there. Like, the other person is probably just baiting his loot after I killed him. Gas is closing in. Relocating the safe zone. So that's what they were already doing. Online. Surprised I didn't get down there. Like when I stood on the wall and killed that guy, that was so bad. But I thought that was like the only. I thought that was the guy who killed the guy on the bridge, but it wasn't. There was a guy on the like fire station as well. Damn! I fucking fly. That looks so sus. 
Normally I wouldn't use the trophy like that, but we have a Bertha that's full HP. So I don't necessarily need the trophy. Dude, why was that kid's footsteps so quiet? Why was- what? Oh, this kid's so dirt. He needed to get a ghost class, so we had to use that floor loot Milano. I would not do that. I would have just gotten my normal class and then like... Did the bounty and got ghost afterwards, you know? We still have that guy across the street. I kind of want to chill here while the zone closes though and see if there's anybody else coming from like uh, lumber because we're already here. Yep. Yo, it's good desire. I was coming to kill this guy. I didn't think he would be like literally right there. I wish this game you could free lean like Rainbow Six. Like, you just like the only time you can lean in this is if you're mounted. Because if he went out the other side, I wouldn't have been able to see him. I, I'm happy he just died. That's cool. Because I didn't. I don't have a lot of ammo. We have three opponents. I don't. I don't know what I want to do here. I might have to make use of this guy's sniper or some shit. Because I'm like so low on AR ammo. Like, the fact that this kid didn't have ammo for me is pretty grief. Gas is closing. Get to the new safe zone. New zone. Good and bad. We get focused here. <laughs> Need to, like, not do anything. Like, one little drop of AR ammo would actually make such a difference. Because then we would have a mag for each player, and that's fine. Like if these kids have UAV self and shit ahead. and they're far away. Got gas in. I'm gonna hide in this bathroom. I'm not. I'm gonna hide in this closet. Target area is marked. You're clear now. This kid definitely revives. GG's, let's get it. I am so happy. That was a good ass game. I almost died there so many times.